Welcome to Fireside Giants. My name is Alex. And today, everyone's been waiting for the new offensive coordinator to be named after Brian Dable was coined the head coach of the New York Football Giants. And it was between Pep Hamilton, recently of the Houston Texans, Chad O'Shea from Cleveland, and Mike Kafka from the Kansas City Chiefs, their quarterback coach and passing game coordinator. Now, the Giants are reportedly, according to Mike Garofalo and Ian Rappaport, going to bring on Mike Kafka as their new offensive coordinator. Who knows if he's going to be calling plays. I know they really want Brian Dable to be focused on managing the game, not calling plays as well. I think that's pretty reasonable to think, uh, given he's a first-time head coach. You really want him to be overlooking and overseeing the entire thing instead of having to call plays and do this and do that and time management. You know, take some pressure off of him. And, and for that reason, I thought Pep Hamilton... Uh, would have been the better option here just for for the the basic reasoning um, that he's very experienced. He's been with the Bears. He's been with Houston. He's been with Indianapolis. He's been uh, with the Chargers. He was Justin Herbert's QB coach during his breakout rookie season. But instead, we get Pep. Uh, we get Mike Kafka rather. So let's give you some information on Kafka. Kafka's a really intriguing guy, and he's more of the fresh blood, um, you know, catalyst here instead of going with a Hamilton, who's more experienced as a play caller. Um, but he's 34 years old, Mike Kafka, really, really young, cutting edge. He's ready to make an impact. Um, he would have been the offensive coordinator of Eric Bieniemy, would have been promoted to a head coaching position elsewhere. But of course, Bieniemy has uh, not, and he remains <clears throat> the offensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs. And Mike Kafka has been kind of stuck behind him waiting for his opportunity. Now he has played an instrumental role in helping develop Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes credits Kafka for helping him significantly. Um, with his pocket presence, um, you know, his footwork, his mechanics and fundamentals, he has played an essential role in helping Mahomes become the elite, unbelievable quarterback that he is today. And when we're looking at how the Giants may utilize Kafka, um, in addition to Shea Tierney, who they stole from the Buffalo Bills, you now have Shea Tierney, Mike Kafka, and Brian Dable, three components in building Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. That is an incredible duo of elite quarterbacks. You are stealing their their primary coaches, um, and that can only benefit Daniel Jones. This will by far be the best scenario Daniel Jones has had in his career after he threw 24 touchdowns during his rookie season. Looks pretty, go pretty good. You know, had some fumbling issues, some interceptions that were like, okay, maybe we need to iron some stuff out. And then he took a nosedive in the in the downturn category. So the Giants finally saying, we got to get some people in here who can help develop our quarterback, and whether that be Daniel Jones, whether that be a different guy that they end up drafting, who knows? The Giants could go out into this draft class and say, you know what? Malik Willis is kicking ass at the senior bowl right now. Kenny Pickett looked good in the rain. Uh, Matt Corral from Ole Miss looked really solid. He has one of the best arms in the draft class. Let's go and grab one of those guys and develop him behind Daniel Jones uh, while we use him as kind of an interim quarterback. Let him battle it out. Best case scenario, Daniel Jones pans out. You trade him for draft capital and you have another quarterback or vice versa. You keep Daniel Jones and you trade your quarterback behind him. So this is an interesting scenario for the Giants. I am going to discuss this in the coming days, um, kind of go over some different scenarios, who I like in the senior bowl and who I like in the, this current draft class that is a quarterback and why the quarterback is actually great. Those guys getting a lot of hype and sensation and buzz is great for us because if the Giants don't go quarterback, they can easily trade back and get more value and look towards the future, uh, maybe 2023 and get more, you know, more picks during a rebuild. And this will be a rebuild year coming up. You definitely need um, to have draft capital because we have a lot of weaknesses on the team. We're going to be cutting guys. We need to supplement that with young players on rookie contracts. So um, those are discussions that we will have in the coming weeks here. Um, I'm excited to go through all those draft things and all the different uh, different uh, senior bowl guys. Those, those quarterbacks over there look really, really good so far. Um, but, you know, go, looking at Kafka, he has developed under Andy Reid, one of the best head coaches in football. You have a guy coming from the Andy Reid coaching style, the Andy Reid coaching tree. Very aggressive and at the modern cutting edge, guys. Before they hired Brian Dable, we were saying to each other, <clears throat> we want a young, cutting edge coach who can bring the modern style of football and offense to the New York football giants. The Giants went out and did that exactly. They got a modern, cutting edge, experienced guy in Dable. They brought in Mike Kafka, who's only 34 years old. He is right at the edge. He is, he is at the top. You know, he is at the modern day. He got in right at the good time. Um, and we're going to be able to steal him from Kansas City, which has been obviously a, a, a benchmark for success for most NFL teams the last couple of years. And a benchmark for developing a quarterback that, that is great. Um, and is Daniel Jones as good as Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes? Not even close. You know, there's a, there's a good probability he'll never be as good as any of those guys. But 
and I've had this argument with people in the in the past few days, <clears throat> it's not about making Daniel Jones those guys. It's about the process of understanding how to build an elite quarterback, focusing on their strengths, getting rid of their weaknesses, uh, things they do during the offseason, um, you know, habits, uh, footwork, mechanics, decision making, all of those different things you can work on with a quarterback. And They've done that with Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. They didn't start as good as they were. Patrick Mahomes sat behind Alex Smith for a year. Josh Allen was one of the worst quarterbacks in the league during his rookie season. He was a very raw um, athlete. You know, he had a great arm, had terrible decision-making and terrible accuracy. Now he is impeccable at everything. So it really is development. And and the Giants went out and stole guys who helped develop those guys. They didn't come out the womb throwing 90-mile-an-hour fastballs on a freaking rope. That's not how it goes. These guys were developed, and the coaching is because of it. The Giants now have an incredible offensive coaching staff. And last year, we were rolling with Jason Garrett. We were rolling with Freddie Kitchens. Um, guy, you know, Jerry Shuplinski really just made his name off of Tom Brady, um, so it seems. But, you know, I think the Giants are really doing a great job. But ultimately, it boils down to the offensive line. If the Giants cannot build their offensive line. The coaches don't matter at a certain point. Bobby Johnson's a good, head, a good uh, uh, offensive line coach. Um, a patchwork OL for the Buffalo Bills this past year. He did a tremendous job piecing them together with rookies and Spencer Brown. Um, injuries across the unit. He was doing such a good job. The only guy who started every game was Mitch Morris, their center. So I think he's going to be a, a great a great guy to come in here and help overhaul that offensive line and help get some good talent in there and coach him up so that Daniel Jones can put his best foot forward or whatever quarterback ends up being our starter for the future. Um, so I'm really excited about that, guys. Mike Kafka is a tremendous hire. I know a lot of people wanted Pep Hamilton, but they really couldn't go wrong between the two. Chad O'Shea was always an outlier, and for obvious reasons, it's coming from Cleveland. Not the same success as Hamilton, or um, you know, with David Mills, a third round pick last year, he did a tremendous job. And Kafka, you know, it's not—I don't think it's 100 percent official yet, but it's pretty much confirmed uh, from some big guys there in the media. So we can pretty much say he's probably going to be the one that they're hiring. Um, and you know what? Like this is this is what we wanted to see. This is exactly what Anthony and I have been talking about for a long time. Modern cutting edge coaches who can help our players develop and, and play at the best of their abilities and not hold them back, guys. So I'd love to hear your opinion below in the YouTube comments. Let me know what you think of Mike Kafka. If you're happy about this hire, um, you know, I'm really curious to hear what you think. Make sure to like and subscribe as always below, and we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Giants episode. Mm-hmm.